Hi, Ian Oz. Welcome to the final part of our maths for physics lesson. We're going to look at graphs um, in a little bit more detail and uh, look at a deeper interpretation using graphs. OK, so just a quick recap of what we did last time. We talked about the fact that gradients can slope positively, which represents an increase in y as x increases, or negatively, which represents a decrease in y as x decreases, or they can remain constant, um, which means the gradient is zero. In this lesson, we're going to calculate a gradient. If we were looking for more than two points, two marks, um, we would certainly need to do a little bit of maths. So hopefully this is revision of stuff that you've covered in maths lessons um, and even stuff that you've done in science lessons before. So at the top here, we've got that the gradient is equal to dy by dx. Now, uh, dy by dx is something that uh, is useful to know about in maths for many years to come, particularly if you take it much further. Um, but simply, dy stands for the difference in y and dx stands for the difference in x. And it's just like the slope of um, a triangle. OK, so uh, the dy, the difference in y is the height of this right angle triangle and dx is the base of this triangle. And we're going to apply this to a graph. So this is how we would do this. OK, this is the method. So to find the gradient, first choose two points in a straight line and make a right angle triangle. The bigger, the better. So here's an example of a graph where I've got um, an X and a Y. I haven't used any variables. These are just we're just doing numbers for now, similar, similar the, uh, to what you were doing in maths lesson. So I'm going to pick two points. I could pick uh, this point and this point and make a little triangle. But the bigger the triangle is, uh, the easier it is to read off the scale and the more accurate your gradient's going to be. So a nice big triangle. So I'm going to pick a point here. This is convenient because this the line passes through a point uh, with two grid lines. So it's going to be easy to read. So I'll choose that point. And this point's very convenient because it goes through 0, 0, making it very easy to calculate the dy and the dx. And then I'm going to draw my triangle in pencil. OK, now the height of the triangle is my dy. So I'm going to measure the height using the axis scale, not using my ruler, but using this scale. So the height of this triangle is 200 units, whatever those units are. And the base, the dx, is 30 units from the x-axis. This is 30 long. And I'm going to put into my calculation at the bottom, we've got the gradient equals dy by dx, which is equal to 200 divided by 30. And we could use a calculator to work out that, that is 6.7. And I'm rounding that to two significant figures because reasonably I couldn't measure the x-axis um, to any more precision than two significant figures. So uh, that's the precision my answer should be in as well. So that's really simply how you're going to calculate the gradient of a graph. No matter what the variables are, no matter what the units are, you're going to be able to calculate a gradient using that method. Um, but we are considering the variables because this is science and this is um, using maths to make something meaningful, to make this graph meaningful. So here I've got a displacement time graph, and my displacement is in meters, and my time is in seconds. So not only do I know what the variables are, I know what the uh, scale on the axis represents. OK. Um, and these two variables are linked by this equation. We know that velocity is equal to displacement over time. Now, the gradient of this graph, dy by dx, is equivalent to the change in displacement divided by the change in time. And 
displacement divided by time is velocity. So the gradient of this displacement time graph is the velocity represented by this slope. Okay, so it's the velocity of an object represented by this slope. So for example, if you were given a graph like this and you were asked to calculate the velocity, you would work out the gradient and you could pick any two points along this line and draw the triangle and calculate it. So I would choose this point and this point. They're convenient because they go through the grid lines. I would draw my triangle on here. I would calculate the height of this from this scale, so that's 4. And I would calculate the length of this, it's 15 minus 0, that's 15. And here I would write uh, dy by dx as my gradient, and I would write down, well, the change in y is 4, and the change in x is 15. Okay, and putting that into a calculator would give me an answer of 0 0.27, and it's meters per second because it's a velocity. So, although in the previous example we didn't have any units, we do have units now, and it's meters over seconds. Meters over seconds. So, this is how we would calculate velocity from a displacement time graph, and there's plenty more examples in the other videos I've asked you to look at uh, that teach you a bit more about that. So that's using gradients. Um, okay, so let's consider the uh, area under the line. The area under the line is another feature of a graph. Okay, now to give you a little bit of context, I've given you a graph with some meaning, which uh, we are looking at in the second part of this lesson. So this is a different kind of graph. This is a velocity time graph. Uh, the velocity given in meters per second here on this axis and the time given in seconds here along this axis. And we can see that this object must be, uh, its velocity must be increasing for some time and then it stays constant for some time and then it decreases for some time. So it's a positive velocity, it's moving away from us the whole time, uh, but at uh, different rates. So what can we get from the area under this graph? Well, here's the relationship between these variables. If we rearrange the equation for velocity for displacement, so we've got displacement as a subject, we've got displacement equals velocity times time. If we find the area under this line, we are multiplying the changing velocity by the changing time. So the area is not going to be meter squared or centimeter squared because the variables we are multiplying are not distance. They are velocity and time. And velocity times time equals displacement. So the area under this line is the displacement. Okay, it's the displacement of this object. If we look at the units and just consider those for a second, meters per second times by seconds well, the seconds will cancel each other out because we'll have seconds divided by seconds. We'll just have meters left over, which is the unit for displacement. So that's perfect. That works out. OK, so if I just give you a quick example here, the area of this un under this line is significant. So we uh, the easiest thing to do, well, you might know the area of a trapezium. You might say, well, this is a trapezium. I'll calculate the area of a trapezium. If you're less confident about that, and I would suggest uh, this is a good thing to do, um, as standard because there are lots of different shapes that you could get is divide it into simple geometric shapes. So I'm just going to draw some lines here to show you that if you go from the point down to the axis quite often you'll have something simple. So we've got a triangle here which is area A, a rectangle here which is area B and area C by this with this other triangle um, and we are calculating this whole area here okay so we're just going to use simple geometry we're going to know uh, we're going to use what we know about the area of a triangle the triangle is a half times the base times the height so for area a 
it's a half times 20 times 20. For area B, well, that's just a rectangle. So that is the base, which is from 20 to 40. That's 20 times 20. And area C is a triangle. So we've got a base, we've got a wider base now from 40 to 80. So it's a half times 40 times the height of the triangle, which is 20. And if we go through and calculate all of these, we've got 200 meters traveled in the first 20 seconds. We've got 400 meters traveled in the next 20 seconds. And then we've got 400 meters traveled in the final 40 seconds. And so the total distance that's been traveled or the total displacement of the object um, either way you look at it, is going to be 1,000 metres or one kilometre. OK, so this is how you're going to use the area under the line for velocity time graphs, and it's why it's relevant. Um, I'm going to leave you to finish the rest of the lesson now. Thank you very much.